Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio workshop. As always, I am joined by Mad Zuri. Greetings. And today we are going over a system that we showed briefly on a previous video where we went over the smelters we used from our 015 map. Uh, we touched on the entry signal system that we used, but there were still quite a few questions, and I think this is something that maybe needs a little more in depth explanation. So, I'm not really what would you even call this, Zuri, this signal system? Uh, like a flip flop or a. I'm not really sure a proper name for sure, it. Sure, you can call it a flip plot if you want. Uh, all right. Um, but yeah, so essentially what this does, and actually you can see it in action right here, is this turns this signal red once these stations, once the boxes at the station gets to a certain amount uh, based on what you set, which Zuri will explain in a second. And then uh, the train leaves, and the signals still stay red while the boxes are like within a certain range. And once they drop down again, it'll open up the signal and let trains in. And since we have chain signals throughout here, what this does is it means that a train will essentially not even path to, like, it won't, I mean, we have trains waiting here, but from the stack or any others, um, won't even try to go to this station because this signal will be red. So it kind of blocks off your full stations instead of sending trains there who just sit and don't unload. It actually sends them to a station that needs it. Yes, and we kind of had extra room, so we put these pre-station stackers, if you want to call it that, right here. Mm -hmm. Which is, it resembles what we did on the 0 0.15 map. But this isn't a bad idea, actually, to, to include these, and we kind of accidentally included them, but they it's fine. Yeah. Alright, so let's go up to the top one. And to make this a general purpose blueprint, I put this extra combinator in here that's uh, each times one to output signal one. That's okay. very useful if you're putting down a lot of stations and you just want a general blueprint. Right. So you'd actually have to base these parameters on how much buffer you want and this, the stack size of the train. Exactly. So, how much was in a cargo wagon for plates again? Uh, 4,000. 4,000 per wagon. So, per wagon. this is a two wagon. We have 8,000 on the bottom combinator. So, when we have more than a train in here, it should turn the signal red. It produces this red one signal, mm -hmm. which turns off the, the signal. So, trains can't get in here. And then it also sends that red signal to this arithmetic combinator, which adds 4,000 to the signal it sees. So it has that one set point of 8,000, and it sees the 4,000 also. So the items in the boxes have to drop below 4,000 for this to turn on again. So it's got a set reset or a latch and release, or whatever you want to call it. There's lots of names for this sort of thing. And I can't remember the exact technical one. So the the set point's the bottom one, and then the gap, or the delta, or, is the top one. We have it set to, to stop trains from coming in when it hits 8,000, and to let them back in when it hits 4,000. Exactly. So yeah, there's that little gap in there where, you know, it... Five, six, seven thousand, or really anything, even like four thousand and one, it's gonna keep it closed. And then right when it hits below four, opens up, lets the train in, fills back up, um, you know, however much that the train empties uh, once it's eight, closes signal, and uh, there you go. So obviously, as Zuri said, you would uh, you would just change these two combinators to your system specifically right so if you had like two four twos in your unloading plate this would obviously increase because you have four cargo wagons so it would be like uh, sixteen thousand is your max rather than eight and then uh so actually that's a good thing to bring up if you say you're doing two four twos right and you had your max is sixteen thousand so double what we have would you want your a delta number here to be half of that 
or still 4,000? Like, what would you want to set that to in comparison? Whatever you want to be the gap between the max and min. Okay, so it doesn't have to be, like, set. Like, it doesn't have to be half or anything. No, it doesn't. You can have um, about the number of boxes or the amount of items it takes for a train to get from here to here. Whatever you think that number is. I haven't tested it, but I'm sure you could. Mm -hmm. If you assume there's a train here, you can have it go so low that as the train pulls in, the last item's being unloaded onto the belt. Yeah, exactly. So you could set it to like a minimum of like 500 or something, you know. Yeah, well, if you, if you assume that just took uh, five or six seconds, mm -hmm. and we have two belts at 40 items a second. Right. That's... So 80 times five is like uh, 400. Yeah, exactly. You could set this bottom one to 8,000 and the top one to 7,600 or so for that last little bit of the boxes to empty. Yeah, exactly. So you can change this to, to what you want. Just, uh, we, you know, you probably want your uh, max number to be equal to a full train worth, at least. So, uh, yeah, really, you just wire up your boxes, hook them in as we show. We will include a blueprint um, for just the, well, well, I guess the unload. We'll just include it for, like, the unload box thing not the belt part and then the combinators and signal and then it's a general purpose blueprint and if you want to expand it you could just uh, add like to the left and hook all those up and you should still be good to go yeah hopefully we'll remember to remove the boxes the yeah the cheaty ones yeah we'll get the rid of cheaty those. boxes but uh but yeah so there you go that's it's pretty much it it's straightforward once you kind of get a look at it and understand and it's really good um, to like maximize your train efficiency again like I said because then you're not sending full trains to a station that's already full um, you're making sure that they go somewhere that is actually uh, needing uh, or whatever you may be unloading but uh but yeah that that's pretty much it and I mean even if you didn't have these pre stackers which as already said it doesn't hurt to do in fact it may be a good idea even if you don't, they'll just sit in the stacker like we have here, since we have this all chained. The chains see each other, and then see the red signal, and uh, just keep them in here until something's open. But I think that pretty much covers it. Hopefully, that gives you guys a better idea of you know how this works and what it does and what you can do with it. But uh, do you have any last thoughts or or comments here, Zuri, for this? I think we did some of the signals wrong, but it seems to be working just fine. So never mind. <laughs> okay well the, the at least the entrance part here is signal correctly that's the main thing yeah the the part with the connected to the combinators is right and that's the part we're including in the blueprint yeah exactly that's the important part so there you go that'll do it uh we'd love to hear any thoughts comments if you have any further questions down in the comments and uh we'll check it out blueprint again in the description for this little part and uh yeah until next time we will catch you later later